the 0-2. Swing and a miss, strike three. Wrap this one up in green and white. Hello, Railcats fans, and welcome back to another edition of the Railcast Talk Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Savetic, and I know it's been a hot minute. And I'm, I'm doing this broadcast or this podcast. The game is still going on at the moment. Um, it's one out. Uh and went out in the ninth inning 13 to two so i it may be a little premature um that that the game is going on but i have so much that i want to talk about um especially the four game series against winnipeg uh the cleburne railroaders jumping the railcats in their eight game winning streak um and a little a little confused also, um, maybe a tad bit confused by the American Association in their power rankings um, this week, just based on the sole purpose that the Cleburne Railroaders are in the top five in the league, and you're looking at the game right now, and it's 13-2, to um, is a bit of a shock to me. And then I also kind of want to talk about, I, I mean, the, the, the elephant in the room. I mean, realistically, the elephant in the room that I really want to talk about is them releasing Alec Olin, right? And they, they also released JV and Williams, which isn't a surprise to any of us, any of us really that it happened. I'm surprised that he wasn't cut sooner. Um, I really like Javian. I thought he was a great center fielder. I just don't think he fully got a chance to play. Um, I know he had a couple inter- inter- injuries. He got hit in the face and, you know, just things. I don't think he got a full nice taste. And I, I thought maybe the way Lamar Rogers was working that he would get him an in somewhere. And I mean, I like Nick Scatlin, but I don't think he's a very good center fielder. I don't think he's a very good outfielder in general. I think that, with Olin being moved out, I thought Javian would have been a good spot for him to be put um, in to that center field role because I think he plays a much better defense. And, you know, it, we're seeing a shift in the Railcats going towards people. I mean, don't get me wrong. Everyone that, that they have brought in so far, um, you know, LG Castillo, Nate Scantlin, Nova, um, even uh, Gre- uh, Greeley, the center, uh, the the catcher, um, is open, oh, and, and that that was just a. Uh, now it's thirteen to three. Um, I don't know who who it was a scored, um, but Woodworth made a nice play. And Woodworth also, I was it Woodworth. I think he had a very nice catch. It was early sixth inning, maybe. Um, I I got to watch the game a little late. I was I was planning on watching the entire game. And writing things down, blah, blah, blah. But um, my fiance's grandparents came down and we went out to dinner, which is very nice. And I, I love having them, you know, we were playing cards and things like that. So it's always fun to have family. And like I said, family comes first, no matter what I do. Um, so I had to scratch that idea. And, and, and there's nothing I, I truly enjoyed spending time with their grandparents because it's a good thing. You know, family, getting married, that kind of It's good to see them, especially... With us not living so close to her family, it's always good. To see. Anyways, I'm getting sidetracked from where I'm going with. So, I mean, realistically, the only one that they had that that the Railcats have um, let go that I that I've not really let go because they didn't. I mean, he retired, he moved back. Was Michael Cruz, and that was the only one that may have potentially kind of hurt a little bit um, on that front of it. But I, I just Olin was just that's just an odd one. He's played every single game. I thought he was a solid defense, uh, defensive person. He was consistent. Yeah, he batted 230, but he was still consistent. I mean, you still look at Chris Burgess and Sab Abbott, who are both batting under 250. I mean, I guess they're all three batting under 250, but they're both batting under 220. Um, I just thought he gave you an extra defensive help that would have, you know, been a little bit different. And I and we're seeing Jackson Smith as well kind of picking up the pace on, on his aspect of it, you know, being catching. So there might be a rotation with him and Greeley. Not 100% sure. Um, I also know, I can't think of his name off the top of my head. I'm going to have to go back and look at the lineup. Uh, oh, it was Engelman. 
Engelman's new guy that they signed but didn't announce it yet. So and it's not on um, point streak yet. So I'm kind of like ooh, thrown off a little bit um, on that one. Uh, I was kind of kind of surprised there was another number five out there. I'm like, who's this new number five guy? Because I, I just didn't recognize the number. Obviously not being Oled. Um, but I, there's a handful of things that I want to get into. Um, you know, Harrison Francis. I, he has been – I know the last game against Chicago, he didn't pitch his best. I don't know per se. I just know that Chicago is just a hot team, and if you hit them at the right moment, they're just going to obliterate I know they're getting obliterated right now. Um, who are they playing? Um, oh, they're playing Winnipeg right now, and they're getting killed 12-2. to 2. So it just kind of depends on who they throw in there, um, how that kind of works out. Um but, I mean, outside of maybe, like, three games or so, I think Harrison Francis has played very good ball. Um, he's one of those pitchers that I expect to, to come out and be – he's been consistent. Yeah, don't get me wrong. He, you know, his control may be out a little hand out of here and there. But outside of that, I thought he's been very good um, outside of John Sheik's. Um, I'll get into his last start because that frustrated the heck out of me, what they did with that and, and getting into this hole yet again. Um, uh, now I think the score – uh, is going to be 13-4 or 13-5. I don't know. Um, I, I think it's 13-5 now. And, and, and you know what? This is another issue that I'm, I'm having right now. This is another. Why do we keep Robbie Corsell employed? I am sorry. I have tried uh, to be semi-professional about it, but why do we keep this man? Out of everyone you have cut, you should cut this man. You immediately should be cut after this game. I am sorry. Immediately cut. Find a relief pitcher that you can use. You're they were up like eleven to one. You put this man in and they've scored four runs already in like two innings. Um, I just Yeah, two innings. He's exactly two innings, giving up four hits, three runs, one walk, and already hit someone. He just he he's not consistent. He he isn't what you want I, I understand that not every person you have in you know this is a spot that yes you want to put the guy in i guess because they're getting blown out but he hasn't helped you from day one he's gotten one save um let me I, i'm just gonna go through and look at um his games here right so just looking at right now okay in his entire career with the Railcats, out of 2019, 2021, and 2022, all right, he's played 11, 5, and 15 games. Total of 31 games, right? He has a 9.10 ERA. He has one save in his entire career. He has 46 strikeouts and 57 innings pitched. 50 walks. Not even, I mean, this year he is been horrendous with walks and i think he just walked another guy he's given up 70 hits i i, I just i just looking at his games if he pitches really more than i he has one game where he pitched over two innings where he's given up no walk or no runs but gave up three walks there's only been one game or two games, my bad. Two games where he's not giving up a walk or a hit. Um, maybe maybe more. There might be a handful more. Just looking at the past like ten games at least, it it's just I I I just I don't I don't understand why they keep throwing him in. And I the the prime example is the. 04 loss against Winnipeg. Okay, so when I look at the whole box score, because I remember watching it, I was uh, I was able to watch it, but I had to work still, um, so I couldn't really um, like watch watch it for you know. But I, I was I had to watch a little bit of it. Um, so when I look at the box score here, right, John Sheik's p pitched a beautiful game, but he only pitched four innings because he pitched like three days earlier. Or at the beginning of the series, I think of Winnipeg, um, but he, th this man, he only gave up three hits in four innings. He get, he had three strikeouts, one walk. He was he was on a roll. Listen to me, you, this this whole new generation of 
rotating a pitcher out after four innings and putting your relief bullpen in is crap. I'm sorry, it's crap. I I just don't. I, my bad. He didn't even give up a hit. My bad. He didn't. Or he didn't give a run. That's fine. It, it wasn't until Corsell came in, and I'm not blaming this whole loss on Corsell. Well, actually, kind of, sort of am because he did get the yell in this, and he only pitched one third of an inning because he gave up a run and a walk. And he hasn't really helped the Railcats, besides maybe one save, but maybe it was a cookie save. He's pitched a handful of good games, but outside of that, it, I, he put him in. I'm like, oh, here we go. He put him in today. I was like, oh, here we go. Here we go. I, I, I just, I don't know why, you know, he, I mean, even at that, I mean, well, Medea came in. He he gave up one hit, no runs, and two two and then Vaught came in, and he kind of, it kind of blew wide open. Um, at that point, now I'm not saying that the real cat didn't help, you know, offensive. I think he just walked another guy, I, and he's still in the game. This is the whole point. I get you don't want to burn your bullpen, and there's two outs, but this guy cannot pitch at the American Association level. He just can't. He can't do it. He's just not. He just can't do it no more. He should be cut immediately. Then he or or if they want to keep him, keep him, whatever. But you're gonna you're gonna tell me you're gonna cut Olid over this guy. You're gonna cut JV Williams over this guy. Heck, you're gonna cut MJ Rooker over this guy, right? I'm sorry. It just, I you, you can't have this. I'm sorry. This is, this is why, you know, you start to gain respect in games, and then it just if if this game would have walked away thirteen to one, you would have been like, oh, yeah, the Cleveland Railroaders are fifth in the power rankings, which is absolute crap. Yeah, okay, they won eight games, but they beat the Lake Lincoln Salt Dogs and Lake Country, like. Okay, they won eight in a row. The, the Railcats beat them, and they had a six-game winning streak, too. Like, it's not that big of a deal. So, the American Association, I don't know what the heck you guys are doing up there, but just because someone gets an eight-game winning streak doesn't mean they're number five in the league. Yeah, okay, they jumped the Railcats by half a game, but before that, they were dead last in the entire league. I just don't know how you jump up that high and, and then get absolutely blown out, but at this point, the Railcats are just shooting themselves in the foot. Um, I, I'm not, and you know, I'm not saying that the cuts that have been made, um, by this organization are not justified because they are, they, 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 they honestly are, but some of the people they decide to keep, it, it baffles me. All right. You have how many people, I, I know Ilio Serrano just came back from the injury list. So he, you may see some time there, but I mean, Adam Heidenfeld is probably your best relief pitcher. That you're using, which I still think he should be a starter of some sort. Um, they just need to 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 classify their their bullpen and and really use people that can be consistent. You know, yeah, you, you, you know, I I know why why Robbie Corsell is pitching right now at this moment is because he had a terrible last game that he pitched. And I mean, you only survive a third of an inning. If you only survive a thirty, that's just terrible. He just didn't have his stuff. It was just it was brutal to watch. Um, not saying that's the reason why they lost that game because their offense didn't help anything out. But I mean, even in a game like this, you know, the the Winnipeg goal or not the Winnipeg, the the Railroaders out of this, right? Now you're starting to give them life. You know, there's two outs, there's a runner on second and third or second and first. You're giving them life, right? Because if they hit a home run here, it makes it 18-13. This makes it a game now, right? It turns into a bit of a game. When I, like, I, I fully understand it's justified why they put him in, you know, to eat up innings to save your better bullpen arms. Because this, this is a huge stretch for the Railcats. This is an absolute stretch that the Railcats are going to need, right? Um, just based on that Winnipeg is a half a game ahead of you now in, in the playoff spot and you're out of it. Right, you're you're, or not Winnipeg, the Cleburne, and then you're going to play Winnipeg again, which Friday I'll be there for that game. So that's going to be a huge tone setter, and then you go back and play Cleburne again. So like, you need to keep winning these games. Like you need to win every series. This Cleburne uh, season, that, that series, uh, they just won. Um, so the Railcats win 15, <clears throat> thirteen to five. Um, this was. A kind of a shot in the arm or a kind of slap in the face to the American Association for putting the Cleburne, Cleburne Railroaders up there 
um, at number five in the power rankings, which kind of baffles me because I'm pretty sure when the Railcats were on their winning streak, they didn't touch the, the pop, top five because they don't get the respect, which <clears throat> they they deserve more. Re- they're starting to gain respect throughout the league, but it's not to that point yet to where they're, mer- they're, they're starting to really push the Railcats you know, in that direction. And, and with them being now moved down, um, just because the railroaders were on such a hot streak, which comes to an end, thank thankfully. And I, I, I still think that the Railcats, with the, with the the people they've brought in, they have the ability to compete with any team offensively, pound for pound. Right. Sorry for my dog. Get that right. Tank. Shh. Thank you, buddy. Can we? Can we not? Hey. Can we not? Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, I'm gonna leave that in there because you know, my podcast. I do whatever I want, you know. But I, I, what I'm what I'm getting at is, and they they have at least three or four good starting arms that can can pitch starting, but they need to be used as starters. They need to be used more than just four innings, more than five. They need to be able to push that six seven roll because then it doesn't burn your doesn't burn your better bullpen arms. Right, it doesn't burn your Josh fin- your Josh Vincent's like it. That just doesn't happen. You you need um, those people to be successful, right? Um, your Chris Irwin's, you could put him in there on that one. You know, uh, Aaron Phillips, Nick Garcia. Like Nick Garcia, you you may be using more of a a, a starter, um, which he might. I think he might be better off in the bullpen because he hasn't really been the best since like right before the all-star break. Um, but they just, I, I they, they need to go out and they need to find people, right? They just, they just need to find them. They need to find those people. Right. Um, I think, uh, Medea might be a good one that they're going to, that they'll, they'll have picked up, uh, Ryan Campbell, I think would be a good one. They're going to pick up, you know, a handful of, you look at the RAs, I think a handful of this stuff that wasn't the best, coming out um right away you know you 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 ran it in the chicago dogs at kind of a buzzsaw so sometimes these these games are not so much based on um uh you know how they pitched it's just some sometimes you run into certain teams that are just a lot better at to be able to hit and stuff like that or they they, they hit hot streaks or whatever the case may be on that portion of it um but i just you know just want to, you know, kind of talk about the Railcats to see where where I see them at at this point because, you know, they're now out of playoff spot and I don't think that I I wouldn't concern that too much because it's not like they've been playing a horrible stretch of baseball. It's not like they lost like ten games in a row and they they, they just fell. It was just a team that just kind of caught them and this is where you kind of make those ground. Now you're a half game up, right? You're half game ahead, and you have to build upon that. You know, you sweep the series, you go two and a half games up. Right. And then they may falter or whatever. You know, the this is the time where it's it's crunch time. Now, you you may have cruised through the first half of the year. Yeah. You, you know, you won that six, seven game winning streak. You kind of cruise. You kind of go in and out and in and out. You have the pieces now. Right. I, I think they have the pieces that they want. You know, OK, now Engelman is now um, up here. Um, you know, his first game, he had two at bats, had one hit, had two runs. Right. Um Greeley came in a couple days ago. He had two two at bats, had one hit. Castillo's come in hot. Um, had has eight hits, six runs, um, six RBIs. Mariaga's still on fire, having twenty seven RBIs. Lingua still doing decently well. Um, so yeah, I think Cruz, um. Losing Cruz when he was starting to get hot kind of sucks because he was starting to get hot. This man was getting hot, hot. And um, but I think you're you're better off defensively with Jackson Smith. But you know, I'm just curious to see what they're going to do with Chris Burgess um, today because I know he was in the bullpen. So I don't know if they're going to use him and rotate him with Sam Abbott, which is something they're going to maybe base it off the starting pitcher. You know, stuff like that. If they're going to slot him in the first base. Uh, DH role, you know, however they're going to work that out. I mean, even Engelman came in um, uh, as he was the DH, um, that kind of stuff. So it's just going to be interesting um, to see what, you know, the whole 
stat line is, but I'll just kind of briefly go through the stat line here because I really didn't I didn't really start watching until uh, about the top of the sixth. Uh, I guess I would say the fifth is what kind of things kind of broken open, um, or yeah, the fifth that kind of broken up for the Railcats. Um, Cleburne scored in the first, or scored in the third, the fifth, and scored three runs in the nine, gave him a total of five runs and eleven hits. Railcats scored five runs in the fourth, six in the fifth, two in the eighth, giving a total of 13 and 10 hits. Um, Nate Scadlin went one for five with one RBI, two strikeouts. Michael Woodworth went two for four with two hits, one run, one walk, and one strikeout. Um, and then Engelman is John Engelman, Jonathan John, what do you want to call him? Um, he had one, like I just said, he had one hit on two, two at bats, two runs, three walks. This is why, see. This is what this is what we're missing. Right? That's you know, out, outside of our joking aside, you know, with with Cruz, he got on base a lot, and you may be finding that with Engelman here. You know, he may be. I don't know. I I really haven't watched him play, um, Ron or whatever. So if he has some speed, he might be able to play in that that leadoff role. If he's getting that many walks, that might set up Woodworth, um, to get more RBIs or Lingua or however you want to you know you want to put it together. And I think this is the first game. Um, yeah, this is the first game that Lingual was out. He didn't play in this game. Uh, he got a break. Uh, Wallraven actually played shortstop. So, you know, maybe we're starting to get some rest points here. Um, but like I said, um, Engelman had three walks, one strikeout. Jesus Mariaga only hit, only had, oh, he, my bad. He didn't get any hits. Um, he must got hit by a pitch because I don't see any walks. Um, he did score one run at five at bats. He had one run, one run, one RBI and two strikeouts. Uh, Victor Nova had one hit at four at bats, two runs, two RBIs, and one walk. LG Castillo, another new signing, went two for four with two runs, one RBI, one walk, one strikeout. Sam Abbott went 0 for three, two runs, two walks, one strikeout. Jackson Smith. Had two hits at four at bats, one run, two two RBIs, uh, no strikeouts, no walks, and Tom Wall Raven went one for three with one one RBI, one walk, no strikeouts, and then looking at the pitching line here, Harrison Francis, I think he had a dominant night tonight. Um, he yes, he gave up six hits, but uh, as long as the hits don't come to bite you. It's not really that bad. You can give up 20 hits and give up one run. I still think you're a hell of a pitcher. All right, because, yeah, they may hit you, but they're not obviously hitting you consistently enough. Um, or, you know, you may give up a hit here or there, you know, and then you get yourself out of a jam. You know, that's the crazy thing about that I've seen from these Railcats this year um, is that their pitching staff seems to strive off of being in high-pressure situations. Um, you see it a lot with like Nick Garcia. You saw it a lot with Carlos Vega. Like they just they do wanted a runner on third and second and no outs, and they just they're like, ah, right, you go let's, let's walk this guy, let's put the bases loaded, and then we're gonna strand him. Like I don't know what it is, but they just seem to thrive off of it. And I love it. It makes it for interesting baseball um, because you know the, the opposing teams like, oh, we're, we got this. You know, you, you, eyes light up. You got a second and guy at second and third. No outs, your eyes kind of light up, and you know, even if you get the ball out far enough, you're gonna score a run, and then just like shut you down. It's weird, but um, a season high in innings pitched. Um, I think the season high was six innings. Even he had six and two thirds innings. Um, he gave up two runs, uh, both earned one walk. See, that was the press part. He only gave one walk today, um, which he averages around three or four walks a uh, game. You know, once his if his control is there, he's dominant. Just just straight up dominant you ain't touching this stuff it's just and he had 10 strikeouts like he has just been lights out with the strikeout his controls there his commands there he's a very tough pitcher to hit um and then they threw robbie corsell in there he had two innings two and one third innings pitch gave up five hits three runs through all earned on uh, two walks two strikeouts um so yeah that was just one of those i i brought it just he, I just, he doesn't look like he, you know, he hit, I think he had like two or three people he hit today. Um, he just, I, his control's not there. Um, I just don't see it. I, I just, I, not, I'm not down, well, I'm down on the guy, 
not saying that he seems like a really great guy. Um, I know like when we, when I went to the home opener and he was there, like he's an older guy, he's been there and, but it just, I, I, I've just seen out of all the moves that they have made that, that would be the only move. This is the only move that I haven't, that that's lasted this long. I'm surprised he's lasted this long. Um, and it's not like they've cut guys for no apparent reason, except maybe Olin. I think Olin's maybe the only one out of this whole thing that I'm kind of like, it's kind of hard for me to say, well, why is he not over this guy or that guy over, you know? Um, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, I don't think the next person I would say out of the fielding positions would maybe be Chris Burgess or Sam Abbott. Um, I don't, they, they may just keep Sam Abbott just because of his left-handed ability and, and his power. Um, or they may just leave it alone for right now. I, I mean, cause they have another catcher. I'm just saying, cause Burgess, I mean, they have another catcher. So, um, I like Burgess. I think Burgess is starting to turn around a lot and you know, I just, we'll see I, too early to speculate on that kind of stuff. But, um, I would like to see them maybe, move Robbie out and bring in another solid arm um someone that they can go I, I know at this point in the season it may be hard or maybe you can make it like I said I don't know how it all works out with like the frontier league and other team but you know maybe it's one of those that you do an inner league change with someone you know you you may trade a player or maybe talk to another team like hey you know we'll take your um you take this offensive guy x and you know are you and then we take one of your lower end pitchers, but on a, on a fully stacked pitching staff kind of deal. You're one of the lower end pitchers that would be higher end with the Railcats. I think that's what they need to go find. Um, but if not, then if they just want to swing away and hack away and games be 20 to 10, go by all means, go ahead and do that. If that's what the Railcats can be ended up fight as, and that's what they're going to do, then let it be that way. And have games that are 20 to 10 or 20 to 19 or whatever they you know i just to me those games aren't always fun because they run forever too and it just it, it's like exciting to go to those games but then it's also frustrating at the same time because it's like can someone throw a pitch and get someone out that kind of deal um but yeah um like i said it's going to be a little rough rough patch try to um try to get these podcasts out and start try to watch the game just because Life's been a little crazy lately. Um, it's going to get even more crazy because there's going to be, I, I'm going to be working inventories where I'm going to be working from 6.30 to 4 o'clock, 6.30 at night to 4 o'clock in the morning. I'll be driving to Michigan and doing other, so I'll be out 13, 14 hours or 15 hours a day um, working overnights and then have to do it again and, you know, vice versa. So this and that kind of stuff. So it's been a little bit difficult to watch games um that's why i kind of wish the games would start like like 6 six thirty ish um just that way like i can watch the game they say three three and a half hour game it ends at 9 30 do a half hour podcast like it's over at 10 by the time that i edit everything down upload it to youtube about 10 45 ish tweet everything out and go to bed but with the game starting at 7, 6.45, that stuff gets pushed back a whole another hour. And, you know, when it's kind of hard to get up in the morning because you're only running on four hours of sleep. And I don't want to run myself ragged by doing that um, because by the time that I come home, there's other things I got to do that I want to do. Um, you know, go on my three-mile run. I got to cook dinner. You know, whatever the fiance wants. You know, there's just there's other things that I that I want to do that I have to do. Um that it, it, it's kind of hard to throw everything in together. So I, I'm, like I said, I'm trying my best. This is still a number one priority, you know, in, in my mind trying to get it, you know, it's always at the back of my head. Like, okay, I got to do something. It's been a handful of days. I got to, you know, I got to put something out there. Um, so it's not that I, that I forget about it because I don't, because I, I look forward to every game that I can watch every game I go to. So, um, but I will be there Friday. I think I'm getting the same seats I had last time. Um, so maybe I can, uh, you know, I didn't win anything from the Hoosier lottery. Maybe this time I'll, I'll be lucky again and get it, get another t-shirt or something along the lines of that. Um, but if you enjoyed today's prod, uh, podcast, um, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, be sure to follow me on Twitter. 
Um, and then like my page on Facebook as well. Um, comments, anything like that, I will do my best to answer if, um, you know, if there's any other concerns, that kind of stuff. If, you know, any suggestions, things like that, you, you right ahead, you know, um, uh, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, if just, just be open, be open-minded. Um, I help you, you help me. I like talking about this stuff. So the more people get talk, the more I can get involved with it and, and have other people have other ideas um because you know i there's just me i'm just me doing this podcast and sometimes you need another voice um to kind of see things through or th see things straight um and different opinions because sometimes when you just hear it from one person um it can get mundane or boring or whatever the case may be um on that because my opinion and what i see is not always the correct thing to see um, so I always love hearing from other people and what their opinion is and, and basing it off of all the facts and um, stuff like that. So like I said, if you enjoyed the, the podcast, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I want you to enjoy the rest of your day, rest of your evening. Um, whenever you're listening to this, I'm your host, Kyle Savinich, and uh, go Cats.